In this video, I will introduce you to the tree control, which is a part of NetAdvantage for WPF line of business. It's called the XAM data tree. So we're going to take a look at some of the functionality that's implemented by this control and some of its capabilities uh, as shown by the feature browser, which ships as standard together with the product you download from our website. So let's take a look at one of these scenarios, uh, this being the large data set scenario. Um, many customers have large hierarchical data sets and they want to make sure that uh, the tree control they're using is capable of showing uh, large amounts of nodes. So in this sample here, we've tried to, uh, we've tried to demonstrate that scenario uh, and you can see that uh, scrolling is smooth and we're scrolling through 5,000 nodes uh, which have been bound to the tree. And these also contain children, so this is um, a tree with, uh, with children as well. And you can see uh, with even children being, being scrolled on the second level, uh, you can see that uh, scrolling is smooth and that performance is not hurt by the uh, large number of nodes being bound to the tree. The second sample we can take a look at is uh, binding of I enumerable. This is mostly for demonstration and also for illustration on how to use this uh, control with data. As with all our samples, you can see the sample code by pressing the XAML or code behind buttons here. So we can quickly take a look at how this tree control is bound. We're using a link uh, query to generate a, uh, an I enumerable, which uh, we then cast to a list, which is then simply bound to, uh, to the tree itself. And as you notice, there are three different levels in the tree. These are continents, which contain countries, which contain cities. So uh, we load an XML file and we select those uh, using the different queries. So how are these actually displayed? Uh, this is uh, given by, uh, this information is given to the tree by the node layout objects we, which you can uh, instantiate and specify for each type of object bound to the tree, the property to be used for the display member path. So this gives you a flexibility and also um, makes it easy for you to, uh, to drive the tree to specify which, which properties are to be used. Uh, and that's basically all you have to do. Uh, the structure itself is inferred by the data source, which is bound to the tree. So another more or less uh, simple uh, data binding scenario using a binding to a view model. Uh, again, if we take a look at the source code, you can see that uh, here we're, we're actually seeing an image in combination with a string, and we, we've done that by, um, by defining the data templates for, uh, for the item template of a node on the uh, title layout. So that contains a stack panel which presents an item uh, with an image and then a text block containing the specific uh, title of the book that we're presenting. So how is this tree bound here? Uh, we're using uh, binding to a view model, that is binding books, that is the property books uh, of the data context of the entire uh, of the entire window. So where are we setting the data context? Right here. We're initializing a view model to hold our data on books and we're setting that view model to the data context itself. Moving on to uh, the features which your users are actually exposed to, um, the XAM data tree supports activation behavior. Uh, in this example, uh, there's a there is a text block here which is bound to the active node in the tree itself, which causes uh, whenever there is a change in the active node for the text to be displayed in the text block above. Drag and drop, uh, we do support drag and drop. Um, this is easily demonstrated in the sample where we're moving uh, 
books uh, across different categories in an improvised book library. And we can actually take a look at the source code to see how this is declared. Uh, just a very simple, uh, a, a very uh, simple scenario. Um, you can implement that by setting the is draggable to true and is drop target to true. This specifies that this node layout, for example, can be dragged. That nodes from this level basically can be dragged, and that other nodes can be dropped into nodes on this level as well. So that's that's basically all you have to do. As you can see in the code behind, there is no code handling drag and drop. Uh, and the node reassignment and uh, drag and drop behavior is actually uh, implemented by the tree already. Moving on to uh, no ed node editing. Um, the Xam data tree supports a variety of ways to um, activate node editing, including the F2 key, the enter key, um, entering editing mode when the, when the node is, uh, when the node becomes active, as in this case, whenever I click on a node, it becomes active and it immediately uh, goes into edit mode. If I switch off the setting here, um, that is no longer the case. I can also activate editing with F2 as specified by this, uh, by this property here. So these are all properties of the, of the, of the tree, which you can easily um, set to, to customize it to fit your particular scenario. Of course, you can, you can disable editing whatsoever if you'd like to have a read-only tree. This is just a brief example showing you the, uh, the events which are raised uh, once a user uh, um, interacts with the tree. Uh, this is helpful for you to perform uh, any pre or post processing or any navigation uh, in the rest of your application uh, based on the input the user provides here. Expanding and collapsing nodes, uh, this can be done programmatically uh, as illustrated here. The way this is implemented is by setting the node expanded state uh, in the handlers of these two buttons, which we, which we saw on the form itself. Basically, we're setting node expanded state for uh, the nodes of the tree to false, that is collapsing them, and the other way around is expanding them. So, moving on to uh, node lines. Uh, the Xam data tree does support node lines, and you can also retemplate these yourself. So, this is just another capability we have to to make this, um, to make the Xam data tree uh, more visually appealing as well as functional. So how are these uh, set? Node line visibility equals visible. So what we're looking at here is the default behavior, uh, the behavior that you get for free without any additional customization. The Xam data tree supports single and multiple selection as demonstrated by the sample. Uh, in this box here, we can select the type of selection behavior we'd like to implement. And this is uh, a simple property, so it's very easy to work with. Something else which um, a lot of customers are using is um, checkboxes in, uh, in the XAM data tree, which allow you to, to select all the children of a node once a parent node is selected. And once a child node is unselected, uh, the, uh, the parent checkbox goes into, uh, goes into indeterminate if there are any other uh, sibling nodes which are checked, as in this case. So we do support this scenario, um, and it's very easy to, to take advantage of this functionality um, in, your, in your own applications. Moving on to styling, uh, we do recognize that styling is a big requirement for today's applications, and we've uh, we've put in a lot of effort in in making the uh, the tree uh, styleable and easily customizable. In this case, uh, on the on the parent level here, the edit template contains two text boxes to allow you to edit both the author and the title of a specific book. 
So how is this implemented? Um, we can easily see that. We see uh, that on the chapter layout, node layout level, uh, we're redefining the editor template and we're specifying a grid which contains two text boxes each bound to the title and author uh, properties of the bound object. As we can see, the other node layout, which is the title layout, is left um, intact and doesn't have its editor template redefined, so the editing behavior on the child level is uh, the default one. How about theming? The Zam data tree ships with the Office 2010 Blue theme uh, provided inside the product itself. And this allows you to build an appearance which closely resembles, to be precise, follows uh, to the uh, finest extent the uh, theming, the colors uh, in the Office uh, 2010 uh, packet. So using uh, the Office 2010 Blue theme, which is shipped as standard with the Zam data tree, you can achieve a modern look for the application you're building. Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.